Did you ever watch an anime and think to yourself, I wish I could watch that without having to read the subtitles all the time? Well, I've definitely been there, and it was one of the reasons that got me into learning Japanese in the first place. And if you're curious how I managed to get to exactly that point today, in this video I'll be sharing with you guys how I got started with Japanese, the struggles I had with it, and three big tips I have for everyone interested in starting Japanese themselves to avoid the same struggles I had. As a quick disclaimer before we start, this is not gonna be a video about how to become fluent in Japanese in three weeks or something, because the sad truth is that's not how language learning works. Learning Japanese will take time and effort. So what I'm gonna share with you guys today instead are some very valuable insights I hope that I learned in almost four years of Japanese study that will hopefully make your language learning experience a lot more effective and fun. First of all, is it worth it? Being able to watch anime without subtitles has paid off for me in a number of ways. I can focus on the plot and the artwork instead of reading the subs that are often very liberal and sometimes straight out bad. Through Japanese, I can understand the dialogue and cultural context of the story way better. But most importantly, learning Japanese has pushed me to move to Japan, broaden my worldview, see more places and meet new people. So yes, it's 100% worth it. The three tips that I want to share with you based on my journey into the language of anime and manga are passion, time and strategy. Three things that you'll have to do, or as I like to call it, PTSD. Let's take a look at each of these in detail. The first thing that you need before you even start studying Japanese is passion. You need to have some sort of passion for the Japanese language if you want to study it. I'm gonna assume you're interested in anime if you're watching this video, so that's definitely a very solid start in my book at least. Since I've always been a big fan of fantasy and science fiction, I was always pretty interested in Japanese history and culture through a number of books and movies. Add to that my general love for Japanese food and my discovery of anime and manga at the end of high school, and I was pretty much set up for giving Japanese a serious shot. I started roughly three and a half years ago by taking a couple of very basic and also very free Japanese courses at my university. These courses took place maybe three times a month, but at the time I already felt like I was learning a lot. And so when I managed to get an internship in Tokyo back in 2018, I went to Japan thinking that I already had a pretty good grasp of the Japanese language overall. It took me exactly five minutes after arriving at Haneda Airport in Tokyo to find out that I knew exactly nothing, a phenomenon that we'll be discussing in more detail later on. However, I never lost my passion for the language, and there was always stuff that I wanted to either watch or read in Japanese. The reason that this is so important is that over time, you'll have to consume a lot of content in Japanese. And so you'll want to find something that you actually enjoy so much that listening to it or reading it will be fun first and then studying second. Whether that is watching anime or listening to a podcast about, I don't know, the herbs and fungi of Hokkaido, doesn't really matter. All that matters is that you enjoy it and that you can consume tons of it. The second really important thing you should be aware of is time. Learning any language is a long-term project, and Japanese is one of the hardest languages to learn if you're an English native speaker, or pretty much any other Indo-Germanic language. I know that there are tons of books and videos out there that say that you can learn any language in X months or maybe even weeks, but the truth is language takes time and work. After this initial blow to my confidence at Haneda Airport, I did something that changed my learning process significantly. I started studying a little bit of Japanese every single day. I started by mostly working with some of the textbooks I still had from my college courses, grind out tons of flashcards, and force myself to learn the classic 1000 kanji within a year approach. This consistency strongly increased my learning speed and also allowed me to keep newly learned words and concepts way easier in my long-term memory. 
As mentioned before, you want to consume as much of your target language as you can and immerse yourself in it, and that is again something that takes a while. So being aware of that fact and being patient and determined to pull through is one of the most important premises for getting to your desired level. No matter if that's watching anime without subtitles or writing an academic paper, you have to be aware that this is a long-term project you're starting. It's not gonna happen overnight, folks. The main thing here is that new things have a really high learning curve at the start, because yeah, everything is new. So it really feels like you're getting really good really fast, but then it suddenly gets harder and harder to learn the same amount of new things, and there will be the first major slump in your learning. This has happened a bunch of times for me with different things, like languages or playing a new instrument. But however slow you think that your pace is, what matters most is that you push through this dip, because it's where most people quit. This is called the Dunning-Kruger effect. It's a cognitive bias in which people with low ability at a task tend to overestimate their actual level, and people with a high ability tend to underestimate this ability. This is one of the most eye-opening concepts I've ever come across. So let's take a graph and mark my true level of competence, let's say in Japanese, on the x-axis, and my perceived level of competence on the y-axis. In other words, how good am I versus how good do I think I am? Due to that very steep learning curve at the start, most people tend to drastically overestimate their true skill level that is nicely called the mountain of stupid. Once you actually hit that point, just as I did when I arrived in Japan, you suddenly realize that this was actually an illusion and you fall into the so-called valley of despair, where you feel like you know nothing. This is the point most people quit, and it's this point that you will have to grind your way through. Because after some time, you will get better at judging your true level better and better, and motivation will rise as you actually get a better hold of the language. And so going into my second year of serious Japanese study, I decided there was no way around it. I would have to start to actually consume Japanese content. Like a lot of content. So I sat down and at a painfully slow speed, started to grind my way through my first Japanese book, Harry Potter. I'm gonna be honest with you, it felt pretty much impossible for a long time. I had to constantly look up words, figure out grammar patterns, read one sentence over and over for at least 30 minutes because I couldn't understand it. You get the point. So to sum it up, be aware that Japanese will take time. So be patient, because I guarantee you that even if it feels like you know nothing, you're actually improving. If you're like me and you need something more practical to work with, go make 30 small boxes, mark the date of the next 30 days on there, and then cross off every single day with a red pen whenever you actually studied some Japanese, regardless if it's only for five minutes or for an hour. This is actually one of my favorite ways of building any habit, so I strongly recommend it. The third tip I have for you, and I believe the most important based on my own experience, is that you can save yourself a ton of time and pointless grinding when you have a proper strategy when it comes to studying. While becoming more consistent with my studies clearly improved my learning speed, the way I was approaching things in the end left me with a ton of individual words and kanji and no way of putting them together. You really don't want to do it like me and study all over the place. And so the first thing you want is a goal. This may sound really trivial, but most people actually don't know their goal for studying Japanese. But I found that having a definite goal makes a big difference in Japanese study. Whether you simply want to be able to order some food, watch anime without subtitles, or I don't know, do research in biochemistry. There are definitely different skills required and ultimately there are a lot of different ways of approaching Japanese language learning. So being aware where you actually are and where you actually want to go is essential. To be completely honest, I really didn't have a goal when I started, but once I realized that I needed a goal, I decided that I wanted to be able to make videos in Japanese at some point. So my suggestion to you is to sit down, think about this, and then go write it down so you don't forget. That way it will be easier to track your progress as well. 
Then another thing that I personally find is very important is to be aware of your own strengths and weaknesses. For instance, some things that I would say I'm pretty good at when studying Japanese are my large vocab large are my pretty large vocabulary, my pronunciation and pix pitch accent, not my pitch accent, as well as my ability to read and listen to Japanese content based on context without necessarily knowing every single word in a sentence. My biggest weaknesses I would say are writing, Kego, which is the formal Japanese language, and my grammar, which I definitely have to keep working on. So what I want to say with this is that being aware of what you're good at and what you're bad at will help you figure out what and how to study. However, take note that you will always find skills that you're poor at. So for example, for me, after starting to read more Japanese content, I realized that my listening was starting to lag behind. So then I listened more. And now it's my writing, and so on and so forth. I personally think it's completely okay to study something that you just find interesting at the moment. It's actually in accordance to tip number one, passion. However, always make sure that it's structured and that you're aware of what you're working on at the moment. For instance, if you're really into watching anime, be aware that that's gonna be listening practice. If you're really into learning new kanji, well, that's gonna be kanji practice. And if you're really into reading novels, then that's gonna be reading practice. Just be mindful of what you're doing. So implementing these things, very slowly I got better and better and better. And finally, I was able to read my books and manga pretty comfortably. Not gonna lie, that felt pretty damn good. Only now I had to address a new problem. My reading was improving, but my listening skills were absolutely terrible. So I did the same thing again, this time with Japanese podcasts and of course, anime. Today I finally managed to find a more balanced way of doing things, but I'll have to admit that for instance right now, my writing is still lagging far behind reading, listening and speaking. And so I'm still experimenting with new and different learning methods. But I now have a very solid base that I can build upon. Okay, so now that we talked about this, I think that these three tips can also help you in overcoming some of the most common struggles that people experience when it comes to language learning. And it also makes your studies more effective and fun. If you're feeling that you're not making any progress, be aware that this takes time and that progress usually comes in breakthrough episodes. Also, if you ever feel like you're forgetting stuff, this is normal. The most important and commonly used stuff will always stick, and then the other stuff will always come back later. The same goes for that feeling you get that you always get two new unknown things for every single new thing that you learn. And so if that ever happens to you, remember the Dunning-Kruger effect and the graph. It will become better over time. Plus, language learning never really stops, literally. For instance, I'm feeling pretty damn fluent in English at the moment, and even then, I still learn new stuff all the time. If you have other things in your life going on that are threatening to overshadow your Japanese studies, make sure to prioritize and make a habit out of it that you simply do every single day. And finally, to counter burnout, make sure that you do things you enjoy and are passionate about. In the end, this should always be about having fun. And so for instance, if you can't stand doing grammar today, better watch some anime rather than skip your practice completely. Consistency over quantity. And so if you can stick to these three things, passion, time, strategy, and do it, PTSD, I'm pretty sure that eventually you'll be able to sit down and watch your favorite anime as well, without subtitles. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If there's anything specific that you want to learn more about in another video, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks guys, peace. Thanks guys, peace. Thanks guys, peace. Thanks guys, peace. We're good. <laughs> Thanks guys. Thanks guys. Thanks guys. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want